Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today we will talk about ultrasound in diagnosis of fetal anomalies. I'll begin with central nervous system anomalies. Number one, anencephaly. This is the first congenital anomaly identified in utero with ultrasound. The diagnosis can be made as early as the 12th week of the gestation and is typically made at the time of an attempted by parietal diameter determination for fetal age. Imaging finding Inability to identify normal brain tissue cephalic to the bony orbits or brain stem along with symmetric absence of the bony clavarium. Number two, encephalocele. Most commonly occurs in the occipital region in the midline, 70%. Also can develop in the parietal, frontal, or nasal area. Imaging findings, spherical fluid or brain filled sac extending through a defect in the bony calivarium. Number three, spina bifida. This midline defect of the vertebrae usually collides to the posterior arch that results in exposure of the contents of the neural canal. Most common malformation of the central nervous system easily diagnosed if three or more vertebral segments are involved. May be difficult to detect if only one or two spinal segments are affected. Imaging findings. Separation or outward splaying of the posterior ossification centers on transverse and longitudinal scans. On sagittal scans, disappearance of a portion of the echoes representing the posterior elements of the vertebrae, frequently with loss of overlying soft tissues. Number four, meningocele and myelomeningocele. Most common in the lumbar and sacral regions associated with numerous intracranial anomalies, especially the carried to malformation. Imaging findings, fluid or neural tissue filled sac extending beyond the spinal canal and associated with the spina bifida. Number five, denti walker malformation. Spectrum of disorders characterized by abnormal development of the cerebellum and fourth ventricle is commonly associated with hydrocephalus. Imaging findings, cystic mass in the posterior fossa associated with a defect in or agenesis of the vermis and separation of the cerebellar hemispheres. <laughs> 
Number six, complete a genesis of corpus callosum. Although occasionally seen as an isolated lesion, a genesis of the corpus callosum frequently is associated with various other central nervous system malformations and syndromes. Imaging findings Increased separation of the lateral ventricles, enlargement of the occipital horns and atria, upward displacement of the third ventricle. Ultrasound diagnosis, absence of the septum cave ampliocytum and the teardrop appearance of dilated posterior part of the lateral ventricles. Teardrop in the standard transverse view of the brain at more than 18 weeks gestation. Complete or partial absence of the corpus callosum in the mid-sagittal view of the brain. Abnormal course of the pericallosal artery. The normal length of the corpus callosum at 20 weeks gestation is between 18 and 20 millimeters. The next, hydrancephaly. Complete or nearly complete destruction of the cerebral cortex and the basal ganglia with replacement by cerebrospinal fluid thought to be related to carotid artery occlusion in utero. Imaging findings Large cystic mass filling the entire intracranial cavity with absence or discontinuity of the cerebral cortex and the midline echo. Brain stem typically bulges inside the cystic cavity. Lysencephaly, ultrasound diagnosis, the whole or parts of the surface of the brain appear smooth with lack of development of brain folds, gyri, and grooves, sulci. Prenatal diagnosis is very difficult, but suspicion could be raised after 24 weeks gestation. The parietal occipital and sylvian fissures appear filled, and the subarachnoid space is usually increased. Borenkephaly, local destruction of brain parenchyma by infarction or hemorrhage with subsequent necrosis of the destroyed area and the gradual evacuation of contents into the adjacent ventricular lumen. Because the ischemic event is often more widespread than the resulting focal infarction, the hemisphere tends to be small and the epsilateral ventricle enlarged. Imaging findings Intracranial cystic lesion communicating with the ventricular system, generally enlargement of the ipsilateral ventricle. Crowd plexus cyst, common finding probably of no clinical significance, must be differentiated from hyperechoic plexus papilloma. Imaging findings Round hyperechoic area in the choroid plexus most frequently at the level of the atrium of the lateral ventricle. Choroid plexus babyloma, rare intracranial neoplasm, 
that may be benign or malignant and causes severe hydrocephalus secondary to overproduction of the cerebrospinal fluid. Imaging findings bright echogenic mass at the level of the atrium of one lateral ventricle. Hydrocephalus. Most common congenital forms are aqueductal stenosis, enlargement of the lateral and third ventricles but normal fourth ventricle, communicating hydrocephalus, generalized dilatation of the lateral third and fourth ventricles, although the fourth ventricular enlargement may be minimal and difficult to detect, and then the Walker syndromes associated with your foster cyst and defect in the cerebellar worms. Imaging findings variable pattern of ventricular enlargement. Microcephaly. It is a clinical syndrome characterized by a head circumference less than the normal range and associated with abnormal neurologic findings and subnormal mental development. Causes include genetic defects, various prenatal infections, and drug or chemical exposures. Imaging findings Suspected if the head perimeter is three standard deviations below the mean for gestational age. If the head perimeter is two to three standard deviations below the mean, Suggest signs including sloping forehead and dilatation of the lateral ventricles. Arachnoid cyst. Arachnoid cyst is located on the surface of the brain and the major fissures must be distinguished from parenchyphaly which communicates with the ventricular system and is usually associated with ventromegaly and a shift in the midline. Also should be distinguished from brain tumors which are usually inside the brain substance rather than located extra-axially. Posterior foster arachnoid cysts must be differentiated from Dandy Walker syndrome in which there is a defect in the cerebellar worms. Imaging findings Fluid field structure in the intracranial cavity often impossible to distinguish from other cystic lesions. Another abnormality is Blake's Bouge cyst. Imaging finding expansion of the fourth ventricle into the cisterna magna, resulting in a unilocular avascular cyst in the posterior fossa, K hole sign in the transverse cerebellar view. Verms is normal size with mild to moderate upward rotation. Cisterna magna is normal. Differential diagnosis is Mega cisterna magna more than 10 mm with normal verms and arachnoid cyst in which the cyst is in the cisterna magna with mass effect on the surrounding structures 
with normal verbs. Brain teratoma, ultrasound diagnosis, this is an irregular solid mass with cystic and or calcified components distorting the brain anatomy. Cerebellar dysplasia, ultrasound diagnosis, transcerebellar diameter is less than the fifth percentile for gestational age. The small cerebrum is due to disruption in the white matter of either the worms or the cerebellar hemispheres. Dural sinus thrombosis. Ultrasound diagnosis, a vascular supratentorial hyperechoic mass in the posterior fossa above the cerebellum surrounded by a triangular sonolucent area, the dilated venous sinus. Hemimegalencephaly, ultrasound diagnosis, there is cerebral overgrowth and ventricomegaly of one hemisphere resulting in shift in the midline in the standard transverse view of the fetal head. The diagnosis is usually made after 26 weeks gestation. There are always abnormalities of sulcation, including agyri, bachygyra, or polymicrogyra. Hulu Rosenkefali, ultrasound diagnosis, abnormalities from incomplete cleavage of the forebrain observed in the standard transverse sections of the brain. There are four types, a lower fusion of the cerebral hemispheres with a single ventricle, semi-lobar cerebral hemispheres and lateral ventricles are fused anteriorly but separated posteriorly. Lobar, Cerebral hemispheres are separated both anteriorly and posteriorly, but there is partial fusion of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles and absence of septum brustum and abnormalities of the corpus callosum, cavum septum brustum, and olfactory tract. Central encephaly The anterior and occipital areas of the brain are fully cleaved as in the lower type, but unlike this, there is no partial cleavage and therefore the salvian fissures are vertically oriented and abnormally connected across the midline over the vertex of the brain. Lubar whole brosencephaly is detectable after 18 weeks gestation, but the other three types can be detected at between 11 and 30 weeks scan.
macrocephaly, ultrasound diagnosis, head circumference more than two standard deviations. Mega cisterna magna, ultrasound diagnosis, the cisterna magna is more than 10 mm in the transverse cerebellar view, and the vermis is normal. Another abnormality is schizen cephaly, ultrasound diagnosis, it is unilateral or bilateral cleft between the ventricular system and the subarachnoid space. In about 70% of cases, the lesion is in the parietal loop. Between 50 and 90% of cases, there are other associated brain abnormalities, including agenesis of cavum septum blustem, septo-optic dysplasia, and, and severe ventriculomegaly. Septo-optic dysplasia, ultrasound diagnosis, Absent cavum septum pellucidum with communicating frontal horns. Tuberous sclerosis. Ultrasound diagnosis. Multiple echogenic nodules in the heart, rhabdomyoma, usually after 20 weeks gestation. And the brain shows cortical tubers and subependymal nodules, usually after 30 weeks gestation. Vein of Galen aneurysm, ultrasound diagnosis, supratentorial midline translucent elongated cyst with active arteriovenous flow within the cyst, demonstrated by color Doppler. The defect develops in the early first trimester, but the aneurysm becomes sonographically apparent just in the third trimester. In 9% of cases, there is high output heart failure with secondary high drops. The last one in our lecture today is ventriculomegaly, ultrasound diagnosis, bilateral or unilateral dilatation of the lateral cerebral ventricles observed in the standard transverse section of the brain. Subdivided according to the diameter of the lateral ventricle into mild between 10 and 12 mm, moderate between 13 and 15 mm, and severe more than 15 mm. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more videos.